Hey there folks and welcome back to the I Am CDB project. I of course am your host CDB, you're not, and of course my shirt is wet because I just did a face shave. We're going to do another head shave today. We'll use Fouet Le Orange by Katie Bubbles, Katie's Bubbles, which I use for my face shave. And let's go ahead and wet the dome here so we can get right into it. Going to be using the Defender again. This will be my seventh day on this blade and it still seems to be okay. It's right at the point where it needs change. And if it does need change during the course of this head shave, don't worry. You know me, I'm not afraid to change up in the middle. And I will, so have no fear. If a change needs to be made, I will do so right in the middle of the shave, if necessary. And I've preached that, I think, in my last, or one of my last, you know, head or uh, face or head shaving videos, I should say. And that is to say, you know, if something doesn't feel right, there's no crime in changing right in the middle of the, of the shape. No crime at all. And all right, we are lathered up. And let's see how we feel today with our Defender, which has become really one of my favorite um, razors. Really, it's, it's really nice. It's not super expensive. And uh, it does a great job, which is the most important thing from my perspective is that you get a great you know comfortable shave and let's see how we do there still feels pretty good again you can tell the blade is nearing the end of its comfortable life it's not uncomfortable if it were like pulling or felt really um like it's you know there's drag or there's going to be skipping or irritation or a problem i would change the blade right now but it's still it uh, feels okay. So I could probably, if I wanted to, I could push another several shaves out of it, probably. Uh, I, I'm not going to do so. This will be my last shave with this particular blade. But it's still, it's still within its uh, reasonable, reasonably um, comfortable life, the blade. And I can't recall off the top of my head what the blades are. For this guy, and they're not super expensive. Um, I want to say they're a little less than Harry's per blade, but don't hold me to that because I could be wrong. But they're not bad, not bad at all. So one of the things I tended to touch on a little bit today, which I had touched on a little in the in a Facebook post, was uh, this thing with uh, Russia. And I tell you what. It is concerning uh, to me, and I think it should be concerning to everybody. And I know what, some people don't like it when I get off on tangents about politics or whatever, but look, this is my channel. I do what I want. Anyway, this week we saw the president's performance in Russia, which was not good in my estimation. Now, later he tried to clean it up, but it wasn't good because essentially, you know, he was more or less on stage appearing to side with Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence officials, which is not good. It's just not. And I don't care if you're conservative or Republican or whatever. It wasn't good. It, it just wasn't. Now, that said, I would like to review a little bit and go back a little bit to the election before this one, whereas Mitch Rom Mitt Romney was running against uh, Obama. President Obama at the time, who was seeking his second term. And a question came up during the course of that debate, and I was watching it. It was something to the, to the effect is, who do you perceive to be the greatest threat to the United States? And I'm paraphrasing, but something along those lines. Anyway, Mitt Romney said Russia, and he went on to start to explain their aggression uh, at that time and so forth and so on. And the response to that by uh, then President Barack Obama was, uh, hey, Mitt Romney, the 80s called and want, wanted their foreign policy back. Basically, basically making him out to be an idiot and got him more or less laughed off the stage. And Democrats, by and large, all laughed at Mitt Romney when he said that Russia was the biggest threat in his opinion, 
and actually backed it with aggression and, and uh, he went on to discuss why he thought so. Everybody on the other side of the aisle laughed at him at that time. And Republicans naturally backed him and said, yeah, we agree. Well, now all of a sudden, things, to, things seem to have flip-flopped. The Republicans don't seem to be all that concerned about Russia. And the Democrats are very concerned about Russia all of a sudden. It's flip-flop. And my, my reason for saying this is, it's crazy. Because Mitt Romney was right then, but the Democrats didn't want to have anything to do about with it because it was, you know, not, they, they didn't want Mitt Romney, period. And I understand that. But now, the tables are turned, and, and the Democrats and Republicans are more or less on opposite sides of this issue. They're still a threat. They were a threat then. And they've sort of swapped sides on the issue because now it's in fashion for Democrats to, to bash Russia. But now, since President Trump seems to be somewhat chummy with Russia, Republicans, not all, but some are reluctant to bash Russia. And I find that to be most interesting and crazy, quite frankly, because they were a threat then, in my opinion, and they are a threat now. And, and if people can't see that folks are just making political hay of these issues, they don't really care that much, a lot of people, about Russia and the threat that Russia uh, I'm going to do another pass because I'm busy babbling. And the threat that Russia poses to the U.S. They just care about it when it's advantageous for their particular party. And now all of a sudden, it's, it's hip to be anti-Russian if you're a Democrat because Trump seem, appears to be chummy. And of course, you know, the Republicans are less hawkish on Russia all of a sudden because of... <laughs> Trump seems to be a little more warm to Russia, and it's crazy. It's, it's just like, are there anybody, are there folks out there who are, who are still intellectually honest and not lock, stock, and barrel committed to a particular party or, or way of thinking that a particular party espouses? I'm really beginning to wonder because I like to consider myself intellectually honest and capable of understanding and capable of seeing something regardless of who it tends to benefit, be it the Republicans or Democrats. And I'll be very honest with you, I'm an independent, have been for a long time. Um, I personally cannot, I mean, the, the parties are so out of whack now that neither party espouses uh, views that are, you know, in accord with what, what I believe. So I believe, you know, there are some things that the Democrats back that I believe, and there are some things that the Republicans back that, that I believe. Uh, I tend to be more conservative generally and libertarian, I might add. More than anything, I tend to be libertarian. But I'm a more of a traditional values sort of person. You know, I believe in traditional sort of family values and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps and all this sort of thing. I'm also a believer. So, you know, I, I believe in, in, uh, of course, Jesus and, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian. And so those are just my particular points of view. Yours may be different and what you believe may be different, but I would ask that those of you who are, you know, out there opining on political matters, are you being honest and consistent? Are you being honest and consistent? Because the truth is, if you're not worried about voter fraud or interference in the election, let me put it to you differently. You can't be worried about the Russians hacking or influence our elections on one hand and not worried about voter fraud on the other. Both issues are important, and if you truly believe that our voting process and democracy should be, there should be some sanctity in it, then you should be concerned reasonably about both issues. If you're only concerned about one or the other, then I would suggest you, you're not really being intellectually honest. And so, I would... Uh, also suggest that you, you know, think about it. 
Just think about it. Are you being consistent? Or are you just cherry picking things that tends to align with your own point of view? Are you using things that, or do you cherry pick things that tend to highlight your point of view? And I think we all do it to a certain degree. But I tell you what, I am not beholden or in lockstep with either party. I can't be. Because if you just watch what they do, it's, it's just absurd. And what is a shame, though, is that there are so many people who are. And whatever their party tends to go along with, they're in, they're in it lockstep. And they don't even notice when it makes, makes them hypocritical on certain issues. Like, for example, issues of voter fraud versus Russia and this versus that. It's, it's very disheartening. And so I would ask that you increase your level of objectivity and think about it a little bit. I try to. It doesn't mean I'm perfect all the time because I'm certainly not. And your point of view may differ wildly from mine, and that's entirely okay. But I try to be objective and I try to be fair uh, in, my, in the application of my point of view and the way I approach things and it doesn't mean that you'll see it my way but at least I'm trying to be fair and consistent and I would ask you to do the same. All right back to the shave that was an excellent shave this guy did another wonderful job so check it out Defender Razor it is a really nice razor in my estimation we're going to finish it off with a little there's a magic because it's made by witches of course and of course you've heard me babbling for the better part of 12 <laughs> minutes now, and you're like, ah, I hate it when this guy talks politics, but I'm telling you folks, it just, it gets old when you see that people are clearly only backing a party position, and yet, if the same issue, if it were flipped, they'd go the other way. In, a, in other words, they're not intellectually honest. They don't really hold any real values. They just flip, you know, based on the prevailing political wind, and that's disheartening from my point of view. Well, we're going to finish it off here. Well, I said we're going to finish it off with Thayer's, but actually we're not finishing off with fine La Orange here, which is great stuff. And I want to thank everybody for watching. Once again, I've been your host, CDV. You are not. God bless.